Hello, good morning. It's Matthew here for another session of Sunday Yoga. How are we all? Is anyone out there? Can you actually hear me? Okay. As usual, we'll just wait a couple of minutes until I get a couple of comments to indicate you guys can hear me okay. And once I get that confirmation, we'll get started. Oh, hello, we got comments. Good morning, Kathy. How are we? Can you hear me okay? If anyone can hear me out there, give me a yes or a thumbs up in the comments box. Yes, all good. Okay, if audio drops out at any point, just give me a yell or drop a comment. Yeah, great. All right, let's get started. Now, oh, hello, we've got another comment. Just do a quick check. Oh, <laughs> no worries, Helen. All good. All right, so hope you're all doing well and uh, enjoying our Sunday morning at home. So today we're going to kind of do a little bit more of what we did yesterday in terms of working towards Half Moon, uh, training, uh, you know, without the use of a block. But uh, I like to kind of progress it a little bit, right? And I think what we were doing yesterday was something quite challenging, so I'd like to kind of revisit that as well, give you more of a chance to practice and once again, as I said yesterday, if there's anything that I do that you feel like is uh, perhaps too advanced for you, uncomfortable, don't feel like you have to go there, all right? Just work to your level. Um, yeah, but uh, obviously, uh, if you do want to, you know, go for it, uh, feel free to use a block if you have a home or maybe use a water bottle of some sort for support. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, well, let's come to the map. So, as usual, we'll start with a cat cow. We'll take a breath in, extend the spine, chin forward, belly towards the mat. On the breath out, bring the chin back to the chest. Push in the hands so the ribs come to together. Breath in. Extend the spine. Breath out, chin to chest. Let's close our eyes and gently roll through this cat cow like motion. Just warming up the spine. Centering our breath and our awareness into ourselves. Feel the breath traveling from the nose all the way down your throat into the belly. And exhale it out. After you've done a few cat cows, we'll start to draw circles with our hips as we did yesterday. Now, if you like, just ground one elbow down at a time as you move through the circle. Please feel free. That's just going to give you a little bit more twist and rotation in the back. We just want to really tune our breath into the body, giving the spine and the hips an opportunity to unlock. And after you've done a few circles one way, let's go the other way. 
personally, I like to do this with my eyes closed so I can really just dial into the awareness in my hips and my lower back, releasing any tension that may be sitting somewhere particular. And it also allows me to connect with my breath. So once you've done a few on both sides, we'll ground our hands down, fingers spread. Walk the knees back a little bit. We're gonna roll the chest as we did yesterday, okay? Just warm up the rest of the spine. On the breathing, chin to chest, roll the chest forward, extend the hips, and on the breath out, sit the hips back. Breathing. And breath out. Breathing. And breath out. Breathing. And breath out. Last one. After the next breath out, let's come and sit in a child pose. Big toes to touch. Step back onto the heels. And we'll just take a few breaths here in child pose. Breathing through the nose. Feel the air brush past your palate. Uh, before it goes down to your belly. And on the breath out, just gently exhale it out the mouth. Feel the air brush past your lips. And now, let's reach your fingertips to the left, okay? So we're gonna stay in child pose, but reach your fingertips to the left. As you do that, you should feel the right side of your body open up. So when we take the breath in, you feel the right side of your body, the right side of your lungs. Just open up a little bit more. And now let's take it to the right side. So take the fingers, take your forehead to the right side. As we take a breath in, we're going to expand into the left side of our body now. When you're ready, slowly come back up to your hands. Now. Guys, can I just do a quick check? You guys can still hear me okay? Because I'm wearing a little headset and I heard a little signal in the middle there. I just want to make sure you can hear me okay. So please give me a yes in the comments to tell me you can still hear me okay. Yes, okay, great. We'll keep going. So... Now we're giving our spine and hips a little bit of warm-up. We're going to start by taking the left hand in front, right foot back. And we're just kind of going to come to this balance first. All right? Now, we're going to take a breath in, reach out. On the breath out, we tap the elbow to the knee, as we did yesterday, right? Breath in, reach it out, breath out. Elbow to the knee. 
Breath in, reach out. Breath out, elbow to the knee. Now, if you like to have a bit of fun, do this with closed eyes. Reach out, breath in, breath out, elbow to the knee. Okay, now on the next breath in, we reach back out. This side, reach around, grab your right foot with your left hand, okay? Today, we're going to kick into the hand every time we breathe in. It's like inflating a balloon, right? So breath in, kick into the hand, lift up through the chest, look forward. Breath out and lower. Breath in, inflate, push through that right hand. Breath out, lower. Breath in, kick into the hand. And this time we stay here for just a couple of breaths, if you can. And slowly release the foot. Now, we're going to do this the same as we did yesterday. Take your left hand out to the left, point the toes slightly to the left as well. I want to see if you can come to a kneeling half moon, right? So flex the toes in that right foot and reach your right hand up towards the ceiling. Right. So if you feel comfortable here, which is where we were yesterday, I want you to see if you can maybe reach around, grab that right foot and try and pull that heel in towards the bum now try and find that point where your right hip is stacked directly above the left and you see if you can maybe use that stacking sensation to just come to the fingertips of the bottom hand now of course if that's too challenging don't worry about going there just an option, okay? And maybe if you want, you can momentarily just take your hand off one second. Oh, or don't go there if you don't feel comfortable, okay? It's just a bit of fun, challenging our sense of balance. Right? If you fall, don't worry. I fall as well, okay? <laughs> now, let's slowly bring everything back down. <sighs> All right, now let's go to the other side. So, hopefully that was okay for you. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> now let's reach the right hand out, left leg back. On the breath in, reach out further. On the breath out, elbow to knee. Breath in, reach it out. Breath out, elbow to knee. Now. Try and do this with closed eyes. The reason I ask you to do it with closed eyes is because you know where we're going. We're going to try to aim for the balance. By closing the eyes, we're going to dial into all those senses into our body that's going to help us with our balance later, right? So, last one. Squeeze the elbow to the knee. And now, we're going to reach around. Grab that left foot. So, on the breath in, I'm going to inflate my chest, kick into the hand, breath out, bring everything down. Breath in, kick into the hand, push through the bottom hand, breath out, lower everything back down. One more, big breath in. This time we hold it here for just a couple of breaths. Use a kicking into the hand to help you lift and Slowly let go of the foot. Bring the right hand outside the line of the right leg. Turn the right foot out slightly. Come to a kneeling half moon as we did yesterday. Right? Now, if you'd like to try the next progression, reach around. Grab your left foot. Really try and find that point where your left hip is stacked above the right. And then Maybe come to the fingertips of your left hand. And if you want to play a little even more, maybe just lift the fingertips off for a microsecond. Right? Oh, and if you fall, that's okay. I fall as well, right? <laughs> it's about finding that point 
and being comfortable there. Right? Oh, okay. Let's slowly let it, let it go. Bring everything back down. Whew. Feel free to take a quick child pose if you need. Otherwise, if you like a more active practice, we're going to come to a high plank on our elbows. So once you found your high plank, we're going to squeeze our glutes, draw our belly button towards our spine. And we're just going to hold it here for the next 40 minutes. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we will go to the other side. Let's take, um, let's come to the right elbow first, yeah? So we'll come to a side plank on the right side. Now we did this yesterday as well, but I like to revisit it because it's quite a challenge and it's gonna help us later on. So if you can, stay inside plank or lift up the top leg, send that top arm forward and let's see if we can do elbow knee taps. Same side now, one. Let's go for five, two. Three, four, and five. Good job. Now, release it with control. Let's go to the other side. So let's find side plank first. All right? We're going to take the top leg up, if you can. Now, let's go for five elbowed and knee taps. First one doesn't count, right? The first one never counts. We know that. Two. No, that's one. Two. <laughs> Three. Four. And last one. Squeeze it. Release. Gently. Come back to the front. High plank. And we'll just hold high, pl high plank for one breath. And lower back down. Oh. Don't worry, I'm not making you do extra core cool at the end. All right. So from here, we're going to go into a sphinx pose, okay? Just make sure the shoulders are directly above the elbows. And from here, feel free to just move side to side, maybe stretching into the hips a little more. Do you want to open up? our hip flexors, any sort of tightness around the front of the hips. Still engage with our breath. All right, let's come down, chest to the mat. From here, let's work into a few cobras. Have the hands today relatively close to your rib cage. So draw the shoulder blades together on the breath in. Lift the chest off the floor for cobra. Breath out, back down. Breath in, lift for cobra. Squeeze the glutes. Breath out. Let's go back down. Breath in. And breath out lower. Alright, now today, we're going to come to the left elbow, reach around, grab my right foot, pull the heel in towards my glute, and I'm going to rest the right side of my cheek down, and roll onto my right shoulder, right? As I do so, I'm going to send my left leg back behind me, so I'm going to really use this to open up my chest. And also, stretch out my left hip a little as well. And this should be quite relaxing. So don't feel like your head needs to hang off the floor. Rest the side of the head down. Very nice. 
So really feel the chest opening up. And then let's go to the other side, right? So come back to center. Well, reach around, grab our left foot, and then we'll just gently roll to our left. Rest the side of the cheek down, the left side of the head down, and then the more you bring that right foot behind you, the more stretch you're going to feel in the hip flexor of the right leg. Take a deep breath in and breath out. One more and release the breath. Now let's come back to center. Let both feet go for a moment. If you like, you can wing screen wipe the legs side to side. Now, we're going to work towards bow pose, okay? So, if you can, we're going to try and reach around both hands to the foot now, okay? So, from here, the more you kick into the hand, the more you can balance. Um, I'm sorry, can I just check? Can you still hear me okay? I just heard a little signal from my headset. If you can't hear me, just let me know, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to keep going. Now, okay, so we're going to go to bow pose. Reach around, grab your feet, okay? Now, when we take a breath in, we're going to kick into the hand and come up a little bit. So our chest and knees are lifted off the floor, right? The more you kick into it, the higher you're going to come up. Now, you can either stay here the whole time, statically, or you can work it with breath. Breath out, lower back down. Breath in. Let's kick it up again. Open up a little more through the chest this side. Breath out, lower back down. Breath in. Kick back up. Breath out, lower back down. One last one. Find the biggest expression of bow pose that you can and now we're going to roll side to side okay now on the next swing roll over to your right side so the side of my head is now on the floor both hands or maybe just one hand grabs the foot if it's too hard to keep a hold of that top leg, release that top leg, right? Just hold on to the bottom if a top line is too difficult, okay? Now, we're going to try and swing over to the other side in one go, if you can, all right? If that's too hard, just remember, you can always let go of the feet and go to the other side, okay? So, if you like to come with me, take a big breath in, and let's swing to the other side. Oh. And once you arrive, just chew into your breath, soften your body. And release any tension in the chest, shoulders, and hips. Now let's come back to the center. And let the feet go. Ooh. Nice work. Now, feel free to do a little child pose to counter if you need. Okay? If you feel like you don't really need it, then we'll just meet in Upward Dog or Cobra. So Cobra is down here. If you like to come to Upward Dog, we'll push up, lift the hips off the floor, and 
Let's go back into our damn dark. Once you're arriving down dog, let's pet all the feet, left and right. Sorry, just checking no one's left me any comments. Let's pet all the feet, left and right and downward facing dog. And then, once you feel like you've done enough pedaling, just find stillness for a moment. Now, as we did yesterday, let's send both heels up high and spin both heels to the left to start with. Just open up a little bit more through the side body. Hopefully today is a little bit more open after the various warm-up exercises we did and now let's take the heels to the opposite side if you want to spend longer on one particular side feel free don't feel like you have to go at my pace I'm just giving you a guide let's bring the heels back to center from here we're going to walk the feet forward to the hands let the head come towards the floor into a forward fold. As I come to my first forward fold of the day, feel the weight of gravity pulling the crown of my head towards the floor, separating each vertebrae, allowing my neck and spine to lengthen. From here, let's go for a halfway lift breathing. Fold a forward breath out. Roll the spine up into standing on the next breath in. Come to Tadasana. Sweep the arms up. And on the breath out, bring the hands back down. Breath in, sweep the arms up. On the breath out, we interlace the hands behind the back. Breathing open the chest. Send the hips forward. Breath out, fold it forward. On the next breath out, let's release the hands to the floor. Step the feet back into your high plank. Toes or knees, doesn't matter. On the breath in, shift the shoulders forward. On the breath out, lower down into Chaturanga. Upward dog or breath in, cobra. On the Ah, upward dog or cobra on the breath in. And downward dog on the breath out. Let's all take a deep breath in. Reconnect with our breath. Now, let's step our feet a little bit wider. We've done this yesterday as well. So if you were here, you should be familiar with this. Now I'm going to start by grounding a little bit more weight into my left hand. Bring my left hand a little bit closer to the center line. What I want to do is I want to reach my right hand to the left ankle or anywhere on the left calf. And then I'm just going to take a couple of breaths here, allowing my body to warm up to that twist. slowly change sides ground the left sorry the right arm down take the left hand reach for the right ankle and you're almost kind of looking up towards the ceiling through your right armpit Come back to the center. We're going to walk the feet forward towards the hands. 
halfway lift breath in, fold forward, breath out, slowly roll the spine up into standing, sweep the arms up, breath in, breath out, release the hands, back down, close the eyes, take another big breath in, this time breath out, hands interlace behind the back, Breathing, open the chest, send the heart towards the ceiling, on the breath out, let's fold it forward, chest and knees, press the palms together, release the hands to the floor, halfway lift, breath in, fold it forward, breath out, we're going to step it back into high plank, Feel free to meet me straight away in Down Dog if you wish, or we're going to do one Chaturanga and all meet in Downward Facing Dog. So once we're all in Downward Facing Dog, we're going to take a breath in, lift up the right leg. So my hips are square, toes are pointing down, on the breath out, curl the knee into the nose. Breath in, kick it back up. This time I'm going to turn the toes towards the right, bend the knee, come to three-legged dog. Now the challenge here for you is to still distribute the weight evenly between two hands. Don't let all the weight dump into my left hand. On the breath out, curl the knee to the nose. Come back to three-legged dog. Now curl it in to the nose. And let's kick that right foot out to the left for fallen triangle. So we did this yesterday as well. Let's thread the needle in fallen triangle. On the breath out. Reach your arm to that right side underneath the armpit. Breath in, reach your hand back up. As you breathe out, reach underneath the armpit for a really deep side stretch. Breath in, breath out, reach through. One more. And last one. Ground the hand back down. Now, from here, come back to a three-legged dog. And we're just going to gently transfer the weight into wild thing. Draw two big circles with your arms in wild thing. And then from here, if you like to do what we did earlier, tap the elbow to the knee. Or simply step forward into a lunge position. Whatever is available to you. Alright. From here. Everyone just meet me in the lunge position. All good? Alright. So make sure you're high on the back heel. We're going to come to our quiz and lunge. Making sure our pelvis is nice and level. Now, we're going to take our hands to heart center. Breathing, lean forward on the breath out. Twist to the side. So we're going to come to a prayer twist, right? So in my twist, and with every breath out, I just think about bringing my sternum towards my thumbs. Now, let's reach my right hand up towards the ceiling, or maybe just bring it to the hip, right? Whatever's more comfortable for you, okay? Now... I want you to try, actually, let's bring it to the hip, 
right? Let's bring it to the head. I want us to come to an easy twist, okay? And now, so you ground the left hand, reach the right hand up towards the ceiling. And then from here, I want us to cartwheel the hands all the way back into warrior two. So everyone meet me in warrior two. Nice. All right. So we're going to flip the front palm, reverse the warrior. Remember, don't focus on leaning back too much. Think about reaching up, lifting my right rib cage towards the ceiling. Take a breath in here. Reach up a little more. Maybe wiggle the fingertips. And now, let's come down. Sweep the back arm in front into side angle pose. This time you're dialing the left armpit or the left ribs towards the ceiling. Now, let's go back again to reverse warrior. Breath in. And let's come forward again for side angle pose. Now with this one, I want you to take your back arm into a half line. Okay? See if you can just reach for that little space between your right rib cage and your thigh. Okay? And just open the chest a little bit more. Now, if you feel pretty strong and stable here, feel free to take your right hand forward. Otherwise, just leave it down there. The important thing is we keep our chest open to the side. Right? Now, on the next breath in, reverse the warrior. Keep the half by if you can. Straighten the front leg. Maybe this time you can reach across and up a little bit more. And we're going to come to a triangle pose now, okay? So keep that half bind if you can. If you feel like that's too much for you, let it go. Shorten your stance a little. And we'll let that front hand slide down. So the reason we want to keep that half bind if possible is really using that as a alignment tool, I guess, to help us stack or align the hips together. That's really going to help us later on in half moon. All right. Beautiful. Now, let's come back up. Just for today, okay? I want to try something a little bit, okay? Rebend into that front knee maybe take that right hand down to the floor first and see if you can reach the right hand through and grab the fingertips on the left hand for a full bind. Now, if you happen to have a towel or a strap near you, you can use that, right, to help you achieve that. If not, don't worry about it. Just keep your half bind, right? But for those of us who have the full bind, I just want to give you an opportunity to kind of work on that and maybe just open the hips a little bit deeper. One more breath here. Now, if you feel comfortable, and this is a big if, right? Not everyone's going to feel comfortable. We're going to kind of try and straighten that front leg into a bound triangle pose. This is going to be quite challenging, okay? So don't try to do it if you don't feel comfortable. And 
Yeah, let's rebend into my front knee. Release. Let's take the chest back into Skandasana. Back, bend into that left knee. And we'll bend into, we'll just lower the hips towards the ground. Keep that front leg straight. <sighs> don't worry, I showed a couple of challenging variations there, so don't get too stressed if you feel like that's quite challenging. It's quite challenging for me too, don't worry. <laughs> Now, as we settle into the Skandasana, maybe as the hips and ankles soften, you just rely a little bit less on the hands. <sighs> All right, let's come forward. Walk the hands forward. And we're going to stand up, okay? So the reason we're standing up is because we want to try a half moon again, right? So yesterday we did the variation where I brought the instep or the arch of my left foot into my right heel. And then from here, all I did was I slowly lower down as far as I feel comfortable and then come back up and as I get more comfortable maybe I take that left hand up towards the ceiling just to help me balance in my half moon right so if you like to spend a little more time playing with that just keep going with that if you like to try a funky progression to that bring the left heel into the glute. Now, from here, we're going to reach forward, reach forward, reach forward, reach forward, and then see if you can open up the hips to the left side. Right? Now, if that's too hard to start with, we'll just do the same thing as yesterday. We slowly lean forward, reach your hand down, and then before you touch the floor, come back up. You just want to work through that range of motion. Get comfortable with leaning forward. And then, maybe, slowly, you can start to open the hips a little bit more. And then maybe, slowly, you can start to open the hips and send the hands forward. Of course, there's no obligation to do this, right? Please feel free to just do what a normal half moon, if you like. And if you do manage to reach this position, you can also release the foot, come into a normal half moon, and then step it back. Meet me in a forward fold. <sighs> Make sure the heels are wider than the toes. We're just going to come down to a forward fold, resting our head towards the floor, maybe working my elbows down to the floor as well. Just use this moment to reconnect with your breath. Of course, if you want to spend more time playing with that balance, feel free. Just letting the crown of her head soften towards the floor. Feel the inner side of the hips opening up. Nice. So when you're ready, let's me mean a downward dog. I'm going to go the other way, okay? just so you can see what I'm doing. But you go anywhere you like. We're going to meet in downward facing dog. <sighs> Perfect. 
take a moment to settle and then on the next breath in I'm going to lift up my left leg toes pointing down to start with I'm going to curl that knee into the nose squeeze breath out kick it back up breath in now open the hip to the left toes turn to the left start to bend the knee I'm going to slowly lower down into wild thing oh no actually not yet not yet sorry my apologies draw the knee to the nose squeeze kick it back up three-legged dog draw the knee to the nose squeeze and now take the leg into fall and triangle kick the left leg out to the right come to fall and triangle all right and now we're going to thread the needle right so on the breath out thread the right hand through for a really deep side twist and breathing reach back up breath out thread us through breathing reach back up breath out we thread us through reach back up okay now we're going to take this leg back up into three-legged dog and from here we're going to flip gently into wild thing with control as I arrive big breath in paint the ceiling draw one or two big circles and from here if you like to take the elbow to the knee go ahead otherwise just step her forward. We're meeting a lunch. Yeah? So I have my right hand down. Let's go to easy twist first this time. So, reaching the left hand up towards the ceiling, opening the chest to the left. Now, Slowly bring that left hand back down. We're going to meet in crescent lunge. Take a moment in crescent lunge. Let the hips open. Let the breath settle. And then bring the hands to heart center. Lean forward on the breath in. On the breath out, let's come to a prayer twist. Hooking the right elbow outside the left knee. On the breath out, I just try to work the sternum towards the thumbs. We bring the left hand to the left hip, right? Just to stabilize. And then, let's cartwheel the arms behind. We'll come into warrior two on the other side. Make sure you're checking with your feet, right? You've got the right alignment. Front foot intersects the middle of the back foot. And make sure that front knee is not collapsed in or out. Pointing straight ahead. You should be able to see your big toe. Now we flip the front palm. Reverse the warrior. And let's come to a side angle pose. Opening up through the rib cages. Reverse warrior again. And let's sweep it in front. Side angle pose. Okay. Now this time, we're going to see if we can take that right out into a half bind. Reaching for that little space between my left rib cage and my left thigh. As I said before, this is just to help us align our hips, right? 
So don't worry too much about what the elbow is doing, whether you have it on or off the leg. Really focus on turning the chest to the side, opening the hip up. Now, let's come to a reverse warrior. Keep that front leg straight. And now, we'll come back to center. Step the back foot in a little. Lean forward. And then, place your hand down on the shin. Let us slide down the front shin to arrive at a comfortable position. So we're gonna try and keep this half bind, if you can, in triangle pose. Yes, I know that's going to provide a deeper stretch into your right hip. So if that's too deep for you, feel free to take that hand away. Just do a normal triangle pose. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But of course, if you can, let's try and keep the half bind. Do one more breath in here. All right. Let's bend into that front knee. Let that front hand drop to the floor. Now remember, if this is too deep for you, too uh, challenging for you, use a towel, strap, a shirt, anything you have to help you. Otherwise, just don't worry about it, okay? See if you can come to a full bind. Reaching for the fingers behind you. Make sure once you've got the fingers, try and in, try and um, really grip, hook the fingertips together. Like this hook, right? But do it behind you. Okay. Let's see if you can just soften into this half bind a little more. And then if you like, straighten that front leg into triangle with a full bind. Still keeping that chest open to the side. And now Let's slowly separate the hands, come back up, and we're going to bend into that right knee, come to Skandasana. Well done. That was quite challenging. So as always, feel free to support with your hands at first in Skandasana. Today I'm not super fussed about whether the toes in that front foot is pointing directly up or slightly out in front. Just want you to really open up into that hip first, stretching out the adductors. Once you soften up a little more, maybe work towards taking the hands off. Otherwise, just leave the hands on the floor. All right. Now, let's shift the way forward. We're going to come to the other side. All right. So, as I said before, we can just do the same as yesterday. Bring the arch of the right foot into the heel of the left. And we just work on leaning forward, taking the hand down towards the floor and then coming back up, right? Now, don't feel like um, going super low if you don't feel ready for it. Use the fingers of your right hand to help you balance, okay? The key is to come out of it with control, okay? So, let's all do one more of this just to get warmed up. And maybe when you feel a bit more comfortable, you can turn the chest towards the right side. And 
lower back down. Now, if you like to play with a more progressive um, progression, <laughs> grab your right foot, pull that right heel in towards your glute. Now, from here, we're just going to lean forward. Maybe start by reaching the hand down towards the floor. Just literally go as far as you feel comfortable. Come back up. You don't have to go all the way. It's about training our muscles to work in this range of motion to get it a little bit more comfortable each time, right? And as you feel more comfortable, maybe you start to t t lean forward and then turn the hip out a little bit, right? And maybe you start to look towards the side. And maybe you start to take that left arm forward. Once you've found your beautiful balance point, just stay there as best as you can. And then maybe release the foot, come into your normal wild thing. And me being a forward fold. Feel free to play with that a little more, right? If you want. Otherwise, we'll all come into a downward facing dog. Just end the practice, okay? So coming back to our down dog, just take one deep breath in here and release the breath. Let's come down onto our knees. We're going to sit onto our hips. We're going to do a Pashimata Asana and then work our way down to the mat for Shavasana. So push with your hands, get your buttocks off the floor, set them back down just to get those ex excess um, muscles out of the way. Reach your fingertips up towards the ceiling and let's fold it forward. Bring the chest to the thigh anywhere. Now, let, sorry, I forgot to say, take the fingers to the feet or ankle or shin, anywhere that's comfortable. And we'll just gently pull our chest towards the thighs. If you happen to have a strap or towel or any fabric nearby, you can loop the towel around the base of your feet. You can use this to pull the feet towards your face so you feel a stretch in the calves as well, right? And then use this to pull your chest closer towards your thigh. That's going to be even better. You that piece of fabric is nearby to you. I really encourage you to close our eyes and just really reconnect with your breath. Let's slowly come out of this. We're going to work our way down to the mat for Shavasana. Yeah? So start to lie down. Gently roll down. I'm not going to make you do core today. Don't worry. We've worked hard enough. Now, I like to do a side twist to finish. So let's bring the right ankle on top of the left knee. And we'll shift the hips a little to the right. Take that whole set up to the left. Just open up through the hips a little bit, which we haven't paid as much attention to today. Good. 
take your gaze to the right, yeah? Look to the opposite side, your legs are. It's the key thing about twisting. And now, let's take it the other way. So resting the left ankle on top of the right knee. Hold on to that left ankle. Shift the hips to the left. Twist it to the right. Look to your left. slowly unwind the legs. We'll all do a bridge pose to finish. How's that? Send the hips up. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Roll the shoulders underneath. Feel your shoulder blades softening. The chest softening. Maybe allowing you to straighten the arms a little bit more. Now let's gently roll the hips down. Let's take the feet up. Grab both feet. Either grab the outside of the feet or the big toes. Whatever you feel is comfortable for you. Keep the elbows on the inside of the knees. Come to happy baby pose. And as you take your last few breaths here in Happy Baby, just reconnect with the breath. Because you're about to come into a very well-deserved Shavasana. And when you feel ready, just lower the hips down, lower the legs down, have the hands by your side, palm facing the ceiling. And as you take a breath in, feel the body energize with a fresh breath. And on the breath out, just let it all go. Give yourself the permission you just drift off. Worry about nothing else but yourself for the next two minutes.
to your body. If you feel like staying lying down a little longer, please feel free. If for any reason you do feel like you wish to sit up and end the practice, just slowly roll to your side first. Take a breath or two in here. Let everything just resettle. And then slowly come up into a sitting position of your choice. Or stay lying down. Once you sit up, just really take a few moments and not rush. Thank you all so much for joining me for today's practice. Now, I know uh, the upcoming week is going to be in a very interesting couple of weeks, so I wish everyone good luck and stay safe and well. If you have any questions and comments, please feel free to ask me at the end of the session. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me today. And on behalf of BodyFit and myself, Matthew, I wish you a very good week. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, guys. So, thank you, Carl, for the lovely comment. Um, if there's any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer you now. Otherwise... I will end the live stream very soon. All right, guys. Thank you so much again for joining me. Thank you, Giovanna. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Kathy. I will see you guys next week. Okay? Stay safe. Bye.